Thank you, Jesus. All right. So I want you to take your Bible and we'll, we'll just flow in the teaching as we've, we've been teaching on uh, the end time prophecies. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you there this morning? Yes, we've been teaching on the end time prophecies and we have seen uh, uh, different teachers on this pulpit with different topics. So uh, it's been uh, a very, very glorious moment. Good teachings. Amen. You see, to grow in faith, we need to cover everything that the Bible teaches. Amen. The Word of God is so wide and uh, Vast that we need to cover. There are so many topics, but we don't just have to select the things that excite us. No, we need to sit down and teach the principles of the Word of God and mostly teach the prophecy. Amen. Because prophecy is something that has been said and that we are still waiting for the fulfillment. So we, we have seen many teachers in this place and just... Uh, uh, last Sunday, or the last two Sundays, uh, Elder Papi was teaching on the 70 weeks of Daniel. Amen. That's what we call in theology the mathematic of theology. Amen. And uh, I, I want us actually to encourage Elder Papi. That was so amazing. You know, hallelujah. Yes, we need to encourage our teachers in the house. Even if you don't quite get it very well, but the day will come that the Spirit of the Lord will just open your mind and you will understand. Oh, now I understand. That's what Elder Papi was teaching a while ago. Amen? So we need to follow and also mostly I encourage us to write things down. You know, these teachings nowadays, these teachings are, not, are no longer popular. They are no more popular in the churches. People are only following teachings like for, on prosperity, the blessing, how you get. We, we even also teach on those things. But there is time where we stop and also teach the prophecy because we are not going to live on this earth forever. Can somebody say amen? amen. Yes, the Lord is coming. So these days, today, and uh, maybe the next Sunday or the following also, I'll be covering the events from the second coming of Jesus. Hallelujah. Events from the second coming of Jesus to eternity. I have the best part. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, most teachers have covered already things like the signs and uh, things like that, the 70 weeks of Daniel. So, uh, I'll cover the events. Events from the second coming of Jesus. To, to eternity. So, you know, most Christians have just a vague understanding of the end times. When you ask them, they will just tell you, yes, I know that things are going to get worse, which is true, amen? But they don't know how. Some people will tell you, I know that Jesus is uh, he's coming back and uh, as Christians will be raptured, we'll go, in, uh, we'll go and meet him uh, on the clouds. But they don't know how these events are going to follow in place one after another. There are also people you know about maybe the great tribulation things, the, 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 the judgment which is to come. So all those things are very, very important to know. This morning, as I said, as I'm covering the events from the second coming of Jesus to eternity, I want us first of all, to understand the church age. Amen. Can somebody say the church age? Which means the church, the age in the sense of period or era. Amen. Are you with me? So uh, you see, God works with periods. God works with a program. Our God is a very, very well organized and organized God. Can you say amen? So... Don't think because the church has been teaching that Jesus is coming back and still we don't see him. So he's not going to come back. He's coming back very soon. Because you see, 100,000 years before our God, 1,000 years are like one, one day. And one day before our God is also just like a 1,000 years. So when we say Jesus is coming back, 
Yes, he's coming back. Even if uh, you think he has delayed, he has not delayed. God knows his program, how he's working. I want us to understand, first of all, the church age. When we read Romans chapter 11, verse 25, the Bible says in uh, Romans 11, chapter, 20, chapter 11, verse 25, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come. Can you say amen? Until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming, has come in. So uh, the church age is the very important part that we need to understand. That this is the period that we are living now. Amen. We are in that period right now, the church, because God has started his program with Israel. He started with Abraham. You see, some people say, no, these things about the Bible, about church, about religion are not for us. Most, uh, mostly those who are from uh, African roots, they say, no, we have to worship our, our ancestors, our, our God, the God of our ancestors. You will go to hell if you worship them. <laughs> Amen. Because they are not God. But we only have one God. That's the God who started his program with Abraham. That's the God who created the earth and the universe. That's the God that we are worshiping even today in church. So, God started the program with Abraham, with Israel, with, one, one, uh, with the, the people of Israel, the children of Jacob. God started the program with, him, with, with them, with Abraham and his descendants. At a certain point, when Jesus came, as you know, they, they did not accept Jesus. They didn't accept him. They rejected him. So, this is what the Bible says. This is the Apostle Paul writing. He said, now we are in the time where God has just made a, 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 an opening. He, asked, he just opened so that people of the other nations can just come in first. That's the wisdom from God. So, the program that he has with Abraham can also be extended to the nations. Are you with me so far? So, God has started something with the people of Israel. But as they rejected the Messiah, now God has said, okay, let's extend it to the Gentiles. Let's also have it open to everybody for a while. Some people teach that God has rejected Israel. No, God has not rejected Israel. Are you with me? God has just put a hold on the program that he had with Israel so that the Gentiles, the nations, can right now, can come in, can also embrace the program that God has with Israel can also come in as the church. Can somebody say church? Do you have an idea when the church started? Not this church. The church in general. The church of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus thought, he said, I will build my church. Anybody has an idea why, when the church of Jesus Christ started? When? At Pentecost. Don't hesitate. You are right. Amen. The church started at Pentecost. So from that moment, as you see, when the Holy Spirit descended, when the Holy Spirit came, from that moment, even when you read Acts of the, the Acts of the Apostles, at that time, they were in Jerusalem. You, look, you see, God is so wise. Amen. There were, at that time, so many people, many nations in Jerusalem. When the Holy Spirit descended, many people came from everywhere. They came to see and to know what was happening. That's the time. That was the inauguration of the church, the opening of the church. From that moment forward, we have been living in the time of, or in the period of the church, which means everybody, anybody, every nation can embrace the God of Abraham, the God of Israel. So God has stopped just a while the Israel people for a moment so that us as Gentiles, we can come in, we can take also the promises of Abraham. That's why when we say we are children of Abraham, we are 100% we are true. Amen. Are you with me? We are right 100%. We are children of Abraham because God has extended the promise also to the nations. So this is good to know that we are living in the uh, church age. The time when the nation, because God has programmed. Before I go further, God has a program with these three group of people. 
Israel is the group number one. Amen. The church is the group number two. And group number three is the pagans. Those who don't believe. They are neither Israel nor the church. Are you with me? Are you with me so far? So if somebody is not, you are not like, uh, you, you are not from, uh, from Israel. You are not, we are not of uh, uh, Israel roots. So you must be at least a church. You, are, you have to be in church. You have to belong to Jesus Christ through the church. So in that moment, God will also have a program with you. If you are neither Israel or nor church from the, to the church, then you don't belong to neither one of those two. You are a pagan. You are not a believer. It means God has no program with you. The only program is that when Jesus comes, you are destined to go to the perdition, to hell. Are you with me? So if you are not Israel, you better be church. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is working with those three groups. So he has totally put a stop for a moment so that anybody who is willing can become part of the church. Now you see what the Apostle Paul is explaining here is this is just temporary. Amen. This is just a temporary thing. He stopped working with Israel for a moment and then let the nation come in first and then there will be a time where he will close the door. Amen. Now he, is get, he will get back to his program with Israel again. That's how the Bible is teaching us and the Bible says, the Bible shows us these things. So as we understand the church age, I will just want to emphasize on something also before I go further. When you read Matthew 22, you will understand there is a parable. Uh, I think we can just uh, take a look quickly. Matthew chapter 22, there is the parable of the wedding feast. This wedding, actually, this parable explains the, everything that I just said. Are you with me? Now, from this moment, when you will go and read this parable quietly, you will understand everything that we have. This wedding, actually, the, this parable says, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. You see that? Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited. This is actually the picture for Israel. They were invited. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and uh, fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they, were, they, they made light of it and went their ways. One to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servant, treated them spitefully and killed them but when the king heard about it he was furious and he sent out his armies destroyed those murderers and burned up their city then he said to his servants the wedding is ready but those who were invited were not worthy therefore go into the highways can somebody say the highways go into the highways and as many as you find invite to the wedding so those servants went went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found both bad and good and the wedding the wedding hall was filled with guests and so on amen so this parable actually illustrates everything that i just said about the program that god has he has the program with israel they did not accept the messiah they rejected him now god just sent he said, uh, just go to the highways and invite anybody. Amen. So we were part of the nations. Now we are children of God through the church. And uh, the Lord has the program with the church. Amen. That's the, uh, the church age that we need to understand. Now, what program does God has, have with uh, the church? I want us to say because we are talking about the events from the second coming of Jesus to eternity. The first event that I want us to know, which, which will appear, which will happen, we don't know when, we don't know the way, we don't know the time, 
But we only see that the signs are showing that the Lord Jesus is coming, and that's very, very soon. Are you with me? The first event we are waiting for, even every day we come to church, we worship. We can be in this building or we are outside, we are waiting for an event. We are waiting for something very, very important that will happen. Not like it will be in a, in a dream, but it will be in reality. That's the rapture. Can somebody say the rapture? I want us to read quickly in uh, the first book of Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18. If you are there, say amen. If you are not, so, you are not following, say I'm not following. <laughs> but we thank God we'll have uh, the time when you can ask questions. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I will read for you. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church. He said, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. You see that? You see that? The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then... We who are alive and remain shall be caught up. Somebody say caught up. Shall be caught up together with, the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with him. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. You see, why the Apostle Paul wrote this to the, the, to the Thessalonians church was because people were worried. You see, with the first century church, people have this belief that the, 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 uh, uh, the appearing of Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus Christ will be very, very sudden at that start, in those days. So the hope was that the church, they started to worry about those who were dead. What will happen to them then? This is why the Apostle Paul is now explaining what will happen in uh, every, like, the sequence that will happen when Jesus comes. Can somebody say amen? First of all, I want you, I don't want you to confuse the rapture, the coming of Jesus, with what we say, the second coming of Jesus. Amen. When we are talking about the rapture, yes, the Bible says Jesus will appear. Jesus is coming, but he will not set his foot here on earth. But when we are talking about the second coming, it is the time when Jesus will come and will set his foot on this earth. But with the rapture, the Bible is teaching us that he will stop where? In the air. That's where the church will go and meet him. Again, this is not something that will happen like in a dream. It will, the Bible is so clear here. It will happen like in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. That's why we need to be ready. Don't joke with the things of God. It can happen anytime in any moment. Are you with me? So, the word rapture in Greek is the word harpazo. It means to snatch away. Are you with me? To snatch away is just something that will happen. You, you, you take something suddenly like that. You see, this is very important to know. As a church... We are waiting for the sound, the sound of the trumpet. And maybe the entire world will not hear it. But only us, as we walk with the Lord, we, we believe in him. 
The Lord will open our eyes. The Lord will open our ears. So we will hear him. Amen. We will hear the, hear the sound. And by his grace, the spirit of the living God will just take us and snatch us away from this earth. And we will go and meet with the Lord in the air. Can somebody say amen? Yes. This is the truth of the Bible, the word of God. This is what the Bible is teaching. This will happen. This will suddenly happen. We don't know when, but we only need to be ready. Just touch somebody, say, tell, tell somebody, be ready. Prepare yourself as the word of God says. Amen. I will just try to cover the four aspects that, uh, uh, that we see or we read in uh, this portion of the scriptures about the rapture. So as I said, the word rapture is not in the Bible, but it is the word arpazo, the Greek word, which means snatch away. You see, when we teach, not every word, not because uh, it's not in the Bible that we don't need to, to, to talk or to teach about it. Are you with me? But the concept is there. Because I say this because you will hear some teaching out there. People say, no, show me where it is said. Show me everything. Show me where that word rapture exactly is written. So I will believe it. The concept is there. The word, the original word, can be translated in different meanings, but at least one day the church will just take it out of this world. That's what it is. Are you with me? Amen. There are four aspects from this, uh, this scripture that I want to cover. The first thing is that the Bible says Christ will descend from heaven. Amen. Christ will descend from heaven. That's why I said don't confuse this with his second coming, when he will come to Jerusalem, he will set his foot in Jerusalem on Mount Olive. And the Bible says, because you see, uh, when Jesus was going to heaven, the disciples were staring at him. And then an angel told them, the same Jesus that you see ascending to heaven, he will also descend the same way on earth. Amen? Yes, he was talking about his second coming, when he will come, and he will set his foot on, uh, on the earth. But at that time, the church will, will be descending together with him. Because at that moment, the church will already be with him in the air, and then we will come with, together with him when Jesus, we are reigning already with him when Jesus comes with the second, uh, what the Bible teaches about the second coming. So the Bible says, Christ will descend from heaven. That's the first thing that we need to know. He will appear and only to us as the church, as the believers. Amen. We will hear the sound of the trumpet. The Bible says not only he will descend from heaven, but also the second thing is that the dead in Christ will be resurrected. Hallelujah. The dead in Christ will be resurrected. Are you with me? Yes. The dead in Christ. Notice, write this down. Not the dead. No, the dead in whom? In Christ, those who have died in faith, those who have died being Christians, that's very important. You see, you need to persevere. You need a pers perseverance, even if Jesus does not come now or the church is not raptured yet, so that even when you die, but you die in Christ. Oh, can somebody say amen? Don't just die, but you need to work out your faith so that even it, when death comes to you, you not only die like any other person, but you die in Christ. Then you will be resurrected in that day. Christ will appear. The first thing is that the dead in Christ will be resurrected. And uh, then all together. The third thing he said, all together. All the living, living, Christ, living Christians. You see, Christ appears. The first thing is the dead in Christ resurrected. And the third thing is that now, what about us? All who are living Christians will be removed, will be snatched away. Amen. Are you with me? Are you following me? Yes. Now, all who are living Christians, we will be now caught up all together with those. You see, this will be a very, very... Uh, very excited moment. Amen. Exciting moment. 
because it will not be the first time that you see people coming out from death. This is going to be the first time. You see, we have seen in the Word of God, it's like Elijah. Elijah never knew death. Amen. Enoch never knew death. Hallelujah. So this is not impossible. I believe there will be a generation, maybe in this generation, there will be people who will never test death. True. Amen. There will be a generation which will never test death. People will, maybe it's our generation. We don't know. Maybe we are there, we'll never test death when Jesus comes. But at least some people who don't believe, who don't believe in Jesus, then they will die and we will see what will happen next. But the fourth thing in this rapture, the fourth thing is that our body, our bodies will be transformed. Hallelujah. Now, the dead in Christ will be resurrected who, those who will be living, us who will be living at that moment, if he comes today, we will be transformed. Which means God will give us, you see now, those who are coming out of death and those who will be living, God is giving us now the new body. Can somebody say new body? God is now giving us a glorious body because we are now, we will be able, and all those things are happening like in the twinkling of an eye. Are you with me? Yes. All those things are just happening like in a second. Like that our body will be changed so that we'll be able to be like Jesus Christ himself when he died and when he came out of death. Hallelujah. His body was glorious. He was able to travel in a second. He was able even to go through this wall here and he's gone. He, he didn't need a door anymore. Time, that time is coming, beloved. When our body will be just changed, we will be covered by the glory of God and we will bo we'll be able to go anywhere we want and go meet with the Lord through the air. Hallelujah. That's why we need perseverance. What is good is that whether you believe or not, but this is the true, unchangeable truth. Amen. This is truth, unchangeable. Nobody will change this, but it will happen very, very soon. Can somebody say amen? I want us to read before, before I, I stop for this day, for today at least, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want us to read 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 51 to 54, and uh, I will stop right there. Amen. You see, the entire chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is talking about the resurrection. But hear what the Bible says here. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Can somebody say changed? We shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 53, 53 for this corruptible must put, put on incorrupt, incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? Amen. Are you with me? The sting of death is sin, we can continue, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the word to close with for this day, just to encourage us. He said, be steadfast. Amen.
immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So there is more to, to cover in this portion, but the first event I wanted you to, to know about is the rapture of the church. The snatching away of this church. This thing that we see here will not, will not end just like that. No. The time is coming where you will look around you and you will see some people are missing. Amen. Amen. Yes, you will just get up maybe if it happened at night. You woke up in the morning and you look around you. Your husband who was a very, very dedicated Christian is not there. Amen. You can call 911. It, will, it won't change anything. Amen. True. Yes. And this thing will happen very, very soon because we see the signs of the time, the way things are going. Beloved, we need to be ready. Amen. We need to be ready. This is not a joke. This is the truth of the Word of God. Can you imagine when that happens? We see even in different movies, when that happens, if the pilot, some people have... <laughs> have imagined even the catastrophes in those moments. Amen. Even on highways. Let's say I'm driving my car and this happened. How many accidents will happen in those days? Amen. You can get mad at anybody, but it won't change. CNN will talk about it. There are people missing this and that. But when some will go to the Word and say, oh, this is what the Word of God is teaching, it has happened. Amen. So we need to be ready. The first event that will occur, beloved, is the rapture of the church. Not the rapture of the nations, not the rapture of Israel, but the rapture of those who are Christians, born again, the children of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So we need to persevere. Let's close, close our eyes.